Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about something that's going to be a topic that really shouldn't be controversial, but this whole dogmatic, if it fits your macros cult, has made it controversial. And for those who don't understand what if it fits your macros is, uh, it originally started as flexible dieting, and what it means is that you track your macros every day, your carbs, fat, protein, calories, and generally speaking, as long as you fit foods in that hit those numbers, and you know, and they'll try to tell you not to be deficient in any micronutrients, that's vitamins and minerals, that you know, you'll reach your body composition goals and everything else. And while we know calories in, calories out <clears throat> is correct, there's actually very little evidence that your individual macros matter for this outside of protein up to uh, you know, a certain threshold. So even the, the if it fits your macros part is, you know, relatively silly other than it can affect certain performance elements, uh, you know, how much water you hold, stuff like that. But it, it actually itself doesn't affect body composition directly, uh, you know, which again is rather rather amusing that they get so obsessed over it because some of these people actually do get obsessed and think that you can track carbs and fat to the gram in your diet that it's even possible to do so you know which is itself an insane or profoundly ignorant proposition the fact that you could even do it uh, but I digress that aside the biggest problem we have with it is that a lot of proponents of it use that well as long as you're not deficient in anything well <clears throat> here's our issue there these same people claim to be evidence-based right that this is all based on science and they're scientific yet they ignore all the research they literally just ignore any research other than calories um, and what i mean by that is when we start looking at health outcomes recovery all this other stuff we don't find that all calories are equal and we don't even find that micronutrient sufficiency as they call it is is even optimal okay and that's a big point here. Every study that looks at things like fruits and vegetables finds over and over and over that health markers look better the more fruits and vegetables you eat. And it's because there's a lot more going on than just, hey, your basic vitamins and minerals. We're looking at overall antioxidant status, okay, and polyphenols phytonutrients, all of these things. When you start looking at these things, we realize that a lot of these are open-ended. Eating wider varieties of these, these things can create a synergy for your health, um, you know, protecting the body from oxidative stress, all these other things. And so what the bulk of the research actually suggests is that eating more whole foods, fruits, vegetables, nuts, all this stuff, and filling as many of your calories as, as you possibly can with these things is better for overall health. And incidentally, a lot of a lot of athletes and, and myself included find that my recovery is better when I focus on heavy antioxidant rich foods. When that becomes the entire basis of my diet and literally what I fill my calories with, right? The difference between I notice if I if I fill the same amount of calories with watermelon instead of rice or cantaloupes or strawberries or something like this instead of just even rice I notice a difference in my recovery okay this matters so if we're gonna if we're gonna be honest with ourselves here here's here's the problem hitting the bare minimum of the RDAs isn't actually optimal the RDAs are what is needed to reach basic health and to sustain life. Okay, because if you're too deficient in too many things for too too long, you're basically going to die. You're going to start having major health problems and potentially death eventually. So that's what it is. These these are the bare minimums to stave off death. They're not optimal for health. And Again, you will find people who do this are like, well, I can do this, or even I'll just take a multivitamin, which doesn't include any of the other stuff we talked about. Because reaching micronutrient sufficiency actually isn't that difficult. 
All right, if you just want to hit the RDA on most of those things, mm, a decently balanced diet, even if it's partially junk food, will do that. All right, it will do that. You know, of course, these same people will say, well, you can't define junk food. Sure we can. I, I can give you a great definition of junk food. Any food that has almost no fiber or is very low in protein. There you go. Definition of junk food. Any refined foods or meals, particularly, because it's usually a conglomerate of, conglomerate of stuff mixed together that doesn't have either high protein or high fiber. There you go. Or I've heard it even just simplified as low fiber food. But again, you know, that would take our lean protein sources um, out also. So, throw that caveat in. And I think we can define these things. We can clearly define this. Because that's also what we find too, is that fiber is an essential nutrient for health. Fiber is essential for health. You know, again, a lot of people say there is no such thing as a essential carbohydrate really well, what about fiber I think it is all right so how can these people claim this stuff is evidence-based it's not it's a dogmatic cult that's what it's turned into and the only reason it exists it was originally started by people like actually my friend Alan Aragon one of the big proponents who pushed flexible dieting out there before it turned into this stuff. Of He meant that, you know, in social events, as long as the stuff hits your calories and, and macros, you can work stuff in in a social setting, but your diet should still be largely, you know, whole foods, right? Just for special events and you go out to eat, family gatherings, whatever. But you don't have to not eat the food there. But people have turned it into, let's just work in junk food every day. And then they come up with this bizarre number, 20%. You just eat 80% whole foods and clean foods and 20% whatever you want. It's a good baseline. It's a good rule. And that's not evidence-based either. It's just a number this group of people in forums and groups came up with and decided this is what we're going to use. Uh, you know, it sounds good. Let's just run with it. But in reality, if we're evidence-based, we could say if that last 20% was filled with fruits, vegetables, nuts, things like that, that last 20% of your calories, you would be healthier. Or you would have a chance of better health. It would be more optimal. And that will carry over to your recovery and your performance in the long term as well. Okay, but guys, it really is about things like antioxidant status of your diet. This stuff matters. It absolutely matters. And that is what the overwhelming bulk of the research suggests. All right, guys. Well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.